In New York City, a fancy grown woman and her friend go to see a luxurious property on sale. They ask about some art pieces that are not there. The property manager explains that Mr. Harrison, the owner of the house, has a wide collection of art pieces. Then while he is saying that the owner has made a fortune, the woman's friend makes up an excuse to leave. Later in a restaurant, both women are talking about the visit to the apartment and there we realize that the friend is, in fact, the grown woman's daughter, Audrey Woods, a successful lawyer who specialized in divorce and she went to that flat to collect information about a case. In Audrey's office, she meets her client and calms her down explaining that she knows how to defeat the opposing counsel. But at that precise moment, she is told that another person has replaced that attorney. They know that the new lawyer is Daniel Rafferty, and although Miss Woods tells her client to relax she is even more nervous than her. When the women enter the courthouse they see Mr. Rafferty completely asleep in a chair. Miss Woods heads to Rafferty to discuss the case but the man is more focused on the woman. She offers to meet an agreement. But Daniel says he won't do that unless she gives him her number and Audrey refuses. Mr. Rafferty carefully observes Audrey and he realizes how obsessive she is. At that moment, the judge comes, but before the trial begins, she has a conversation with Daniel. They already know each other. Audrey is confused but continues to ask for a continuance due to the missing artwork. At that moment, Daniel interrupts saying that those pieces had been given away long before by Mr. Harrison, and his wife had signed the donation contract. Then he asks for the continuance to get up to date with the case and the judge agrees. While Audrey is talking on the phone with her mother about what happened in court, her assistant rushes into her office and says that Rafferty is on TV. Miss Woods tells her mother to watch the man on TV, and the woman is impressed by the man's cuteness, but Audrey is not charmed at all, she is disgusted by how he manipulates the press and feels challenged. As Audrey feels that Daniel took the lead and she always refuses to lose, so she finds out where his office is and heads there. Daniel's office is in Chinatown which doesn't surprise Miss Woods. She finds the building and knocks on his door but no one welcomes her, so she decides to go in anyway and begins to inspect the cluttered office, in an attempt to find some information that will be of use to her. Suddenly, Daniel's voice is heard, she tries to leave everything as it was, and when she sees the man coming up the stairs, she flees through the emergency exit which sets off an alarm. She sneaks through a supermarket and causes a small commotion when a cab almost runs her over. Then at the Manhattan Law Congress Divorce Seminar, the presenter introduces Ms. Woods as one of the city's best and most successful lawyers, making her feel flattered. At that instant, Daniel shows up at the Congress, apologizes for being late, and sits down next to Audrey noting the coincidence of meeting. The presenter, this time somewhat annoyed, introduces Rafferty by saying that he practiced law in Los Angeles, Boston, and Chicago and adds that he has never lost a case. Audrey questions him for looking disheveled but Daniel deflects her words, by telling her that he feels she is flirting with him. Audrey dismisses this and asks him what he is doing there. Surprisingly, he tells her that she should be more grateful since she is there, because a friend of his was unable to attend and asked for a replacement. Therefore, Audrey Woods is there thanks to Rafferty. Then she gives a speech about how divorce should not be suffering, just a chance to examine the complexity of human relationships, and is applauded by the audience. Now it is Daniel's turn who in his speech mentions, that he never understood where was the passion to destroy the other when it was necessary to save the marriage. He then adds that with small devices such as cameras, married couples can find out if their spouse is cheating on them. At that moment, Daniel shows some images of Audrey taking things from his office. The woman is embarrassed and by the time Daniel finishes speaking, she has already left the seminar. Back at home, Audrey is ashamed and outraged, because she believes that it was Rafferty's strategy to make a fool of her. But she is really proud and willing to win the case so she decides to make a plan. Miss Woods visits Daniel Rafferty at his office and apologizes for having left the seminar and breaking into the office, but in fact, she wants to make Daniel think that he has the upper hand. Audrey gives Daniel a present and claims that she intends to have a meeting. Rafferty thanks and invites her to come in. He opens the gift which is a fancy red tie. After flirting a while, Daniel says that the meeting is a great idea so they can join that same night, and Audrey agrees, she says it will probably rain though. Daniel brings Audrey to Aladdin bar, there is a band playing salsa and although he really enjoys the vibes, Audrey does not feel comfortable in that place. The woman asks Daniel about his discourse, she thinks that what he said was all nonsense, but Daniel asks her if she ever thought about telling a client to make things right with their partner. Audrey replies that marriage has no sense for her, to which the man answers laughing and asks if she is dating someone. The girl receives this as an offense, she strongly affirms that she could be dating for a whole big deal and loving for 12 days a week. But as she is mad highlighting how capable of loving she is, Daniel praises her, telling her how beautiful and intelligent she is. However, Audrey insists and says that she is not dating anyone because it's a trial marriage. Then, she asks the man if he is seeing someone else, to which he replies if she means apart from that same night. Audrey laughs and says that they are not on a date, it's just a meeting, and maintains that intimacy doesn't change a thing, business is business. At that moment the waitress arrives with the order, a drink called Huevo de Chivo, also known as Godeg. 
The woman says that it looks like a medical waste, but Daniel explains that is an old Cuban tradition when two rivals are going on a duel. Sharing the drink means that, just because they try to eliminate each other doesn't mean they don't love and respect their rival. They make a toast and swallow the drinks, but Audrey is disgusted so Daniel dares her saying if it's too strong for her. Audrey accepts the challenge and they end up drinking a lot of alcohol. When they realize it started to rain heavily. Outside the bar, they are looking for a taxi but when they get one, Audrey tells Daniel that she cannot feel anything with her mouth. So the man in a mischievous move leans on the girl and softly kisses her lips adding that he can feel that. Sooner than later, and driven by the effects of the alcohol, they are kissing each other full of passion and spend the night together at Daniel's apartment. The next morning, Audrey wakes up confused, and asks Daniel if she did something about she may regret. Daniel hopes not, he says that her clothes are in the washing machine, and that they must be in court in 45 minutes. But her garments have shrunk and she cannot find her underwear. Oppositely, Daniel looks wonderful wearing an elegant suit and the red necktie she gave him. Now in the courthouse, Audrey states that her client must have a larger amount, than stipulated in the prenuptial agreement but Rafferty interrupts, and claims that just because his client has a large sum of money does not mean that he should give his wife more than the agreed amount. Miss Woods fiercely replies that they were husband and wife for eight years so her client deserves it. But at that moment Daniel says he remembers something Audrey had said the night before, and he wrote it down. Then he pulls Audrey's underwear out of his pockets and reads the exact Miss Woods' words, intimacy doesn't change a thing, business is business. Audrey is furious and yells at him, but the judge supports the prenuptial agreement and dismisses the case. Outside the courthouse, Daniel is talking to the press when Audrey leaves, he stops her but she is mad at him and tells Daniel that he owes her an apology. Daniel's reaction is to compare this apology with the fake one Audrey gave him the day before. The girl admits she was trying to soften him and that's why she let Daniel seduce her, but Daniel says that moment was important for him. Audrey pretends she doesn't care and leaves. Then, Audrey is with her mother in a store and tells her what happened, and the woman says that she doesn't understand why she always hides her feeling when someone likes her. But, of course, Audrey denies it. The mother finds dresses by a fancy designer called Serena. She explains that Serena is Thorne Jameson's wife, the lead singer of a rock band called The Needless, and although Audrey shows apathy, she ends up buying a dress. Back home, Audrey is watching Daniel who is talking about his book on a TV show. There he asked about their legal dispute, but to Miss Woods' surprise, he responds that he believes that Audrey Woods is the best lawyer he has ever met, which flatters the girl. Sometime later, both are involved in another legal dispute, but this time Audrey is on the winning side and up to this point, they are on opposite sides in several instances. One night, Daniel phones Audrey to invite her to dinner out, but she refuses the invitation. Then, her mother invites her to the Needless concert but that's not Audrey's style. Despite that, they go to the club but the music is too loud so Audrey is not comfortable. She goes outside and meets a girl crying. Audrey asks what's going on, so the girl answers she is mad at her boyfriend and wants to get divorced, but Miss Woods encourages her not to do it. Audrey also adds that relationships take time and that divorce should be the last resort. The girl nods and says she is using her dress, at that moment we realize she is Serena, Thorne's wife, so Audrey gives her her card. Audrey has a meeting with Serena at her office, and explains she is loyal to her clients. Then in a bar, Audrey is with her seniors celebrating a new client but at that precise instant, a waiter approaches and gives Audrey a huevo de chivo. The woman is confused, she looks around and sees Daniel raising a glass, but he is not alone, Serena is with him. Audrey completely upset, goes to their table and there she finds out, that Serena is Rafferty's new client. Thorne's wife says she chose him because she had read his book, and Daniel is capable to be harshly cruel to her husband and that's what she desires. Then, Audrey follows Daniel to the men's room and blames him for having stolen her client. But he says that Serena went to see him after reading his book, and affirms that he is not lying because he doesn't like to do that. Miss Woods threatens him saying that he must leave Serena alone. But Rafferty also adds that if Audrey wasn't so paranoid and selfish, both of them could coexist not only professionally, but also in other aspects. Therefore, Audrey decides to meet Thorne Jameson at a hotel where he is reunited with some fans. At first, the rock star tries to seduce the girl because he thinks is one of his fanatics, but Audrey is there just to warn him about his wife's actions concerning the divorce. Once again, Daniel Rafferty and Audrey Woods will clash swords on trial defending opposite sides. The four of them have a meeting but it is a complete mess, and since neither Audrey nor Daniel wants to continue in this chaos, they decide to end the meeting because it will get them nowhere. Now alone, Serena and Daniel discuss terms in the lawyer's office, she says she does not want Thorne's money, she knows how to make a living. The only thing she wants is a place called Cashley and Cloach, a castle located in Ireland but that's going to be difficult because Thorne also wants it. 
The man claims to have bought it, but the woman affirms to have called the real estate broker. As both sides want the same establishment, the two councils have to go to Ireland to interview the castle's staff. In Ireland, Audrey wants to rent a car, but the owner of the place tells her that the store is closed on Tuesdays. He gives her a long-lasting explanation, but by the time he finishes she has already left. Audrey decides to sit by a road, check a map, and hitchhike. Suddenly, a car appears, she asks the driver for a ride. But when she sees who is driving the car she can't believe her eyes, Daniel Rafferty in the flesh. At first, Audrey is reluctant to get in the car but after noticing that it was really far away from the castle, she accepts the ride anyways. Then on a hill, they stop to appreciate the beautiful and wonderful landscape. But the car falls into the water so they have to continue their way on foot. It's late in the night, almost midnight, it's getting darker outside and a thick fog emerges. Daniel and Audrey are lost in the woods but fortunately, they find an abandoned old trailer to spend the night. Once inside, Daniel manages to light a lamp but they argue like a couple. Then, the man lies down and invites Audrey to do the same because she looks tired. Cuddled, Daniel tells the girl that he does not understand how someone so accomplished and smart as her can be so insecure. Audrey responds that she had a hard childhood because she didn't look beautiful when she was young, and her mother was the most beautiful woman in the world. Then Audrey asks him not to leave her and Daniel answers that he would never do that. Then he smiles sappily. On the next day, they realize that the castle is just a few meters away from the trailer. They head to it and when a nice housekeeper welcomes them, both try to incessantly convince the staff. The two lawyers interview everyone there, the maids, the groundkeeper, and even the valet parking men. As Daniel is not making any progress, he asks if he can see the rest of the staff, but the housekeeper explains to him that won't be possible, because that night everyone will be celebrating the town's anniversary. She tells Audrey and Daniel the story of the couple who founded the village. Both were deeply in love, but the girl's father did not approve of the marriage so they ran away and got married in that place. Every year the people there celebrate in their honor and is a very romantic festival. The two lawyers get dressed to go to the celebration. Daniel compliments Audrey's outfit, but she mocks him. Now in a bar, they enjoy the traditional Irish music and dance while drinking some strong shots. After dancing for a while, Daniel is involved in a competition of drinking three pints of beer in a row. He wins and gets a decorative goblin as a prize, which he gives to Audrey. Then, they see a symbolic wedding as a representation of the founders of the village. But Daniel and Audrey feel the power of love and they decide to get married in that bar. On the next morning, Audrey wakes up and realizes that she is married to Daniel. And although the man is really happy, she does not feel the same. Audrey adds that the wedding wasn't real and Daniel would never want to marry her but the man is cheerful. On the flight back to the US, they continue discussing if the engagement was real or just another silly mistake. Daniel still points out that it means a lot to him but Audrey continues to reject it. At that moment, she gives the goblin back but she smashes it so violently that it breaks one of its legs which worries Daniel because he wanted to keep it as a souvenir. The girl apologizes but the man simply closes his eyes and ignores her. Back in America, Audrey is at home with her mother who tells her that she got married to Daniel. Her mother claims that the alcohol never has a good effect on her daughter. The girl says no one in the office must know about that, so her mother suggests sending a petition but Audrey explains that wouldn't be a good idea, because she fears that the press will know everything immediately. However, on the next day, Miss Woods receives a phone call from her mom warning her to check the newspaper. She rushes to the front door to get it but when she opens it, Daniel is there with the newspaper in his hands, which shows some news about their commitment. Audrey accuses Daniel of having told the press about it, but he says after everything she said, he would never say a word about the marriage. He heads to the phone claiming that he will call the post to say they are wrong. But Audrey interferes and asks him to be patient with her, because she is overwhelmed and does not know what to do. Daniel explains to her that whether they like it or not, they are married, maybe it was impulsive and hasty but it's the reality. Audrey understands and recommends showing themselves as a married couple, otherwise, they can ruin their career. Daniel moves to Audrey's house to live together, but they have separate bedrooms and the girl installs a lock in hers as well. Although Audrey is not pleased at all, her mother gets along really well with Daniel. The next morning, Audrey is sitting at the table doing some work. Daniel shows up and tries to charm her but she is distant. The man asks if she is wearing those clothes. Miss Woods affirms it and looks confused. So Daniel approaches her and says that she needs something more. Then he puts out of his pocket a little box which he puts on the table. Audrey opens it and inside the box, she finds a beautiful ring. The girl is speechless, she can't believe her eyes. Daniel tells her that after all, they are married and it has to look real. The man softly takes Audrey's hand and puts the ring on her finger. She nods and continues to say no words, until she asks the man if he has a ring for him. He shows her another box with a ring for himself and the girl puts it on his finger too. As expected, every time they meet in court with the Jamesons is a disaster. But on the other hand, Audrey and Daniel get closer and closer, like a real marriage. They spend time together, do the shopping, and have romantic dinners. One day, while Rafferty is taking out the garbage, a piece of paper falls off the bag. That paper is a $4 million check in a hotel in Aspen. 
That night, Audrey is in her bedroom. She gets out and finds Daniel lying asleep on the couch. She looks at him and smiles. Next to him there is the goblin but Daniel has fixed its broken leg. He keeps it after all. But Daniel is secretly awake. And when Audrey leaves the living room he smiles pleased. Now in court, Mr. Rafferty is highlighting every single thing Serena did to take care of Cashley and Cloach. She renovated the castle, restored the gardens, and reached into the community as well. But her husband interrupts and says that she also cheated on him with the gardener. Rafferty answers by saying that if fidelity is the issue, they have proof that shows Thorne's brothel world tour. But Miss Wood says that's not the point and what is relevant is that Serene does not deserve the castle, just because she painted some walls and was popular among the people. Mr. Rafferty in a loud voice claims that his client must not be deprived of her lifestyle, especially when her husband spent $4 million on a love shack with his mistress in Aspen. Thorne is perplexed by Daniel's words and Audrey is stumped too, so she asks how he knows, but before he can answer everything becomes a disaster. Thorne leaves the room screaming and punching things, accusing Audrey of telling him about Aspen. Now both alone in the courthouse, Daniel explains to Audrey that it was an accident. He was taking out the trash and he saw the paper, but Miss Woods does not believe him and wants the divorce. The man reminds her that could influence her professional career. Daniel also says that they shouldn't give up just because of a little mistake, otherwise, they won't be far from their silly clients. But Audrey is fed up with his view about marriage. The man adds that he does not believe in divorce and although he makes a living on that, he considers it just a job. Daniel claims that what he sees in people who get through a divorce, are people that don't want to fight for what they believe. Although they get stuck in an argument and Audrey doesn't believe a word, Daniel claims that he doesn't care about his job or career, he cares about her. While looking straightly into her eyes Daniel tells Audrey, as he cares about her he will give her the divorce, because when you love someone you have to be generous enough to give the other what they want. Audrey has no words, just remains dumbfounded, so Daniel says he will pick up his belongings later and leaves. Both of them are now in their places, lonely and sad. Audrey phones her mother while Daniel drowns his sorrows by drinking. Audrey lies in bed when all of a sudden the phone rings, and she answers immediately hoping to hear Daniel's voice, but it's a call from her mother instead, so she starts to cry sadly. Her mother comforts her by telling her not to live trying to avoid mistakes but to just make them. She then adds that she is running out of favors, but Audrey looks at her confused. Her mother asks her if she knows how hard it is to place an ad in the post, and at that moment her daughter knows that it was her mother who published the news of her marriage and smiles happily. The following day, the judge and Miss Woods have a meeting, in which the judge says that Thorne Jameson has come back to the castle in Ireland, and as it hadn't been given to any of the two sides it is forbidden. The judge asks Audrey to go there and solve the problem within the next 48 hours, because she will dismiss the case for lack of prosecution. Audrey has no choice but to go to Ireland again so she flies to Cashley and Cloach, just to find both Thorne and Serena together showing their love. They explain to Miss Woods that they arrived on separate planes willing to destroy the whole place, but when they get there the housekeeper congratulated them on their anniversary. So, for better or for worse they decided to solve their problems because after all, they love each other and can't just give up. At that moment, Daniel appears and says he agrees with Thorne about not giving up. The rock star invites Audrey and Daniel to eat something, and calls the butler. It comes that the butler was the priest who married the lawyers when they went to Ireland. But at that moment he claims he is not a real priest, he does that just for fun and has no power to marry people. Audrey is devastated, deep inside she wanted to be married to Daniel who is also destroyed. He claims that the last thing that they need in that room is a divorce attorney so crestfallen, he leaves. Audrey remains in the room crying sadly, but Serena encourages her to fight for her love, reminding the words Miss Woods told her that time in the concert, breaking parts is the last resort. Audrey rushes to the airport but to her misfortune. The flight has already gone, she asks if Daniel Rafferty is on that plane, but the ticket agent claims he is not allowed to give that information. The girl begs him to help her and claims that it is really important so the guy sympathizes with her, checks the information, and confirms that Rafferty is on that flight. Audrey feels hopeless and asks for the next plane to New York. Back in America, Daniel is in his neighborhood doing the shopping and when he is in the supermarket Audrey shows up. The girl tells him in a soft voice that she felt alone and while approaching him she asks if what he says about fighting for love is true. With a honeyed gaze, Daniel affirms he truly believes that, so the girl asks if he wants to fight. What we see next is the judge marrying the attorneys, they are now husband and wife, a real marriage to fight for. 